Hi everyone, Pastor Winston here. I'm going to decrease here for a second. We're going to talk about Matthew 7 verses 15 through 20, a tree and its fruit. And you know, what's really great about this is we look back on the Jesus's teaching to uh, the disciples and to us about the narrow gate and the rough road. And it is hard. It's really hard. But in that teaching, he's separating us really from the worldly majority and saying, you know, you're not of this world. You you are of the kingdom, but I want you to be in this world, and I want you to be salt and light in it. But now, with this teaching, he's saying, you know what? You're going to have some ravenous wolves in your midst, and I'm going to give you some ideas about how to how you might figure that out. And so that's what he's going to do. And and so he he really does that in this scripture. So let's take a look at it. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You'll recognize them by their fruits. He goes on to say, Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? You see, every healthy tree bears good fruit, but the diseased tree bears bad fruit. A healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a diseased tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus you will recognize them by their fruit. So what I really like is the Gospel Transformation Bible has a footnote on this verse. And this Bible is, uh, all the notes are are oriented towards grace. They're oriented to bring out the grace point of scripture. And it says, the mere claim to be a follower of Jesus and the mere possession of an outward trappings of a commitment to him do not indicate whether one's relationship to him is real. Christian discipleship is genuine when it arises from a heart and mind transformed by God's grace. And this inner transformation, which Matthew calls repentance, will inevitably bear good fruit you know what what a wonderful thing that is you know when you think about it it it's a it's a way of looking at things and one of one of the things that i've always noticed about people is that there are some people that just re- refuse to be self-critical in a genuine way or take any personal responsibility for things that they actually have some stake in and part in but they don't take any of it. And so that's one way. But you know, there's more more than that. I learned in seminary, and a course I had with Diane Doriani, about, you know, a certain, there's a doctrinal test, and there's also another test called an ethical test that really, I think, flows out of this Sermon on the Mount rather than, than the doctrinal. But I wanna share those two with you because I think they're a good way to take a look at this. So. Let's take a look at that um, three-way test for doctrinal teaching. Um, th- this is this is great. Basically, th- this can apply to any cult, any person, any situation where you say, is this person true? Well, who do they say Jesus is? Who is Jesus? And then the second thing is, how can one be saved? Is it Ephesians 2, 8, and 9? You're saved by grace through faith and these are not of your own, but they're gifts of God, not of any works, so no one may boast. For you are created by God. You're created to be in Jesus. And you're created to walk in good weeks and he's pre- works that he's prepared for you to walk in in advance. And then the, you know, the third thing is only in the Bible. Nothing else. No Book of Mormon. No Book of Health and Science. No watchtower, nothing, no added information but the Bible. These things alone are written so that you may know that you have eternal life. Then there's the ethical test. I really like this one a lot. What about Jesus' ethical commands? Like, love your enemies, lust is adultery, and on it goes. Remember those right after the Beatitudes? They're hard, they're tough. We struggle with those. Are are any of these things present, number two? Um, love, joy, p- 
peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, goodness, self-control? Or what about, you know, that confession of faith that we make every week and we talk about love is patient, love is kind. It's not self-seeking. It does not hold to keep a record of wrongs. Is this, is this kind of stuff flowing out of this person or not? And so to close, Jesus says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Hmm. Dallas Willard writes this. He says, I, I'm seeking the kingdom of God when I'm face to face with another person. Does it matter if this person is my enemy? Now, here's the good news. I am given under God the ability to love and bring a blessing to that person, no matter who it may be. How about that? God gives you the power. He gives you the power to live out these commands by the power of the Holy Spirit within you. So rejoice and be glad in it. And have a great week, and I'll see you when I get back. Bye-bye.